Peace, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are whipping up something really cool. I'm calling it bubbly bath dough. The inspiration for this DIY was a popular Lush product. So the base of it is very simple. It's mostly cornstarch, and that's just regular grocery store cornstarch with some vegetable glycerin and some sodium lauryl sulfate, and then just a titch of a preservative. That base can then be customized with fragrance and color to create all kinds of really fun, sort of Play-Doh-y things that you can use in the tub. You can squish it up and create all kinds of like little snowmen or happy faces or whatever you want in the tub. You can massage it directly into a wet loofah and it will lather up like crazy. Or you can also crumble it under running water to get lots and lots of bubbles for a bit of a bubble bath. This is a great DIY to do with kids. So as an adult, you'll want to mix up the base, but the kids can help you knead the color into different parts of it. This is also a really great science lesson because this bubbly bath dough is a non-Newtonian fluid. That means that it behaves really differently, really unexpectedly from other fluids when we apply force to it. For something like water, no matter how aggressively we stir it, it's still watery, right? But with this, if you leave it for a while, it kind of goes bloop and it behaves like a liquid. But as soon as you start working with it, it firms up and turns into a pliable putty. How cool is that? I have provided some links to learn more about that in the description box below and in the blog post over at humblebeeandme.com. And if you love bubbly bath things, I've got an awesome extra formulation that you should check out. My friend Zahida from Handmade in Florida recently released a gorgeous video tutorial and formulation for a humid proof bubble bar. And she lives in Florida, so she knows a few things about humidity. This is a lovely formulation that she first shared at the Unique Bath Body and Home conference that we both spoke at back in June. If you'd like to buy the formulation, there is an affiliate link in the description box below and my patrons get an exclusive discount code. So thank you, Zahida. It's a gorgeous formula. All right, let's go get our sudsy bubbly flubber on. <laughs> we'll begin by combining the ingredients for the sort of doughy base, and it's just five ingredients. This dish contains two ingredients. You'll need 52.7 grams cornstarch, and this is just regular cornstarch from the grocery store, 22.5 grams vegetable glycerin, 24 grams sodium laureth sulfate, and then in this little dish we have our preservative, 0.3 grams liquid germal plus, and our fragrance uh, or essential oil of choice at 0.2 grams and make sure whatever you choose is bath safe. So nothing that's going to irritate your sensitive parts if you're sitting in a tub of hot water with it. Now we're just going to stir it all together. If you wanted to make this dough in just one color, you could add the mica now, but we are going to work it in later after dividing this dough into a couple different uh, parts so we can have a couple different colors easily. Now, as you stir, you'll start to notice the non-Newtonian fluid part of this come out, because initially it's gonna seem like it's just way too thick and you're never gonna get it all together. And then it'll get like really weird and liquidy as you just leave it. See, it starts to ooze. And then we'll start stirring it and you'll be like, oh gosh, like that's way too thick. We're never gonna get all the powder incorporated. And then you leave it and it starts to ooze. Like how cool is that, hey? Once you have everything incorporated, you can really start to appreciate the awesome non-Newtonian fluidness of this. So when we're not really applying any force to it, it just behaves like quite a viscous liquid that'll kind of puddle around, you know, it'll do that characteristic liquid thing of taking the, uh, the shape of the container it's in. But as soon as we apply force, it gets all hard and solid. I mean, how cool is that? Okay, <laughs> so up next we are going to add some color. So I'm gonna do four different colors. So I'm going to weigh out roughly 25 grams of this into four different little bowls. For color, I'm going to use a selection of different micas. So I've got sort of a lilac one, a soft pink, a kind of like coral hot pink, and a lovely orange. These are all from Yellow Bee and they were all gifted. Now technically we want 0.075 grams of each mica in each of these dishes to make 0.3%. In this case, that level of precision isn't crazy important. You can read more about that on the blog, but you're okay to just do like a little, a little spoonful. Generally speaking, if you're using enough mica to get, you know, a noticeable color, like that's fine. To work everything together, first I'm going to pop on some nitrile gloves. If you're doing this with kids, this is the point at which you can get them involved. And so we're going to basically just be kneading the mica into its little puddle of goop here. So I basically like to just kind of scoop it out into my hand and then you can start 
just kind of working it together like a dough. Something else that would probably work very well for coloring would be food coloring. If you have that instead, uh, you can read more on my blog, but yeah, that would be just fine for this DIY. You can see that as I'm playing with it with my hands, it is quite, you know, a firm moldable dough, but as we leave it, it starts to kind of moisten visibly on the surface and relax. And so I'm gonna pop that back in there. And as we do the rest of them, you'll see that this is just gonna bloop out into a puddle. Depending on how uh, fussed you are about kind of keeping the integrity of each color, uh, you'll probably want to wash your hands between uh, colors. These two are pretty close, so I'm not gonna wash between these two, but I will between those ones. I'm gonna turn the top down on that one to try and prevent too much mica poofing when we start smooshing. See, in the time that it took to smush this one together, this one really started to relax. We're not seeing any noticeable sort of shapes from it being uh, molded around. And this one is also already starting to just kind of chillax. So there are our you know, four different colors mashed together. And we did them in this order and you can see that this one's kind of the most relaxed. And then this one is still kind of the firmest showing some uh, indentations from being squished around. Obviously, the more you squish them around, the more the marbled appearance will dissipate and the, the more uniform the color will be. So it's just honestly up to you how much you want to squish them around. Here are some versions that I made where I included the mica right from the get-go so you can see that we get a much more uniform color. And this is one that's been sitting undisturbed for about 45 minutes. And so you can see it looks really liquidy, but as soon as I get in here, it's gonna... <laughs> thicken up and become really like you know, firm and pliable. Ah, science is so cool, guys. For packaging, you are going to want to keep this quite tightly wrapped in plastic. So I'm going to be using a sort of a zip top bag, kind of just putting the four different blobs at the bottom, squeezing most of the air out and then rolling it up. You could also uh, plop these in a roll of cling film and wrap them up that way. Here's what happens if you leave them exposed to air. You know, this, this happened in like less than, uh, less than 48 hours. It just got really, really firm and powdery. If or when that does happen to you, it's not a complete waste. You can now use this as just kind of a powdered bubble bath. You can just kind of take these bits and crumble them under running water in your tub and you'll get lots and lots of awesome lather. Hello and uh, welcome to my bathroom for a demo of how this bubbly tub dough works. I wanted to really show it to you, you know, in proper context. So apologies if it's a little echoey in here and apologies for the rather awkward camera angle because my bathroom is really not very large. So in here we have some tub dough and you can of course squish it to your heart's content and make little happy shapes and characters that you can plop on the side of your tub. And then when you are ready to wash with it, it foams up and suds up beautifully. And to show you that, I am now going to climb out of my bathtub and turn it on and show you. All right, so that is how you make some awesome, bubbly, sudsy, lathery bath dough. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and make sure you're reading the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. I also want to throw a massive thank you out to my patrons. They helped me buy the light that is up there that is making it possible to film in my bathroom and not have it look like dark, shadowy garbage. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a patron, I have a link to that in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.